Well, guys, Season of Defiance is finally here. Alongside Strand, Cloud Striders, Puka Fish, and a full-on invasion of our solar system. Now, the last 10 years have been leading up to this moment. Now, there's a lot going on in Lightfall, and I am going to be talking about the campaign at some point. Today, though, I want to give you the seasonal guide for Season of Defiance. Again, we have the annual expansion, which is Lightfall, everything taking place on the Amuna. And then we have another front, which is back at home, where Season of Defiance will be taking place. Now, in order to begin the Season of Defiance, you'll need to complete the first campaign mission. No lie, guys, this is one of the strongest points of the entire campaign. It started off so strong. But after you complete this campaign mission, you'll know you're ready to begin the seasonal story content when you first talk to Nimbus as a vendor. Now, upon speaking with Nimbus, he'll give you the objective to go talk to Osiris for the Lightfall campaign. And then immediately after, he'll present you your seasonal artifact called the Ascended Scepter. Alongside the message, you take the scepter and notice the lights, the hollow projectile flashing with an urgent message. Once you claim the Ascended Scepter, you actually will get this pop-up right here. This is actually just the back right of where Nimbus is, right next to the Postmaster. Now you access it, and you're gonna get a message from Marsaw. She informs you that in the wake of the Witnesses' attack, she is answering the Vanguard's call for aid. She will hold the line on Earth while you fight amongst the stars, but implores you to return when you are able. This will take you to the next step to then go speak with Marsaw at the farm. That's right, guys, the farm is back. Now, upon arriving at the farm, you'll need to make your way to the center. Some really cool narrative points here. Devram and Mithra speaking, assessing the current situation on Earth. Now, Amanda Holiday is also missing since the initial attack, and it's time to find her. After both Devram and Mithrax transmat out, Mar will give one last bit of dialogue before your mission will progress on its own. You'll then need to visit the Holiday Projector at the farm for a briefing from Devram K. Now, Devram lets you know that the survivors of the attack are being held captive near Trossland in Old Russia. That actually includes Amanda Holiday. And our job is to go in, blow our load, and release the prisoners. Now, after this dialogue, you'll get a summary text, and then you'll be able to proceed to the next step. Next, we'll be going to the EDZ, and you'll find the battleground at the bottom of the map. You can actually click that and load in. The battleground itself is power capped at 1600. Not terribly difficult. It'll also match make you with two other guardians and put you right into the action there in the EDZ. Now, these battlegrounds have three parts to them. First is the initial area, where you'll have to fight off several waves of Shadow Legion before Mars shows you how to open a rift to the Ascendant Plane on a plate out in the middle of the water. You can actually hop on your Sparrow to reach it. The second part of the battleground, you'll be finding the Taken as you infiltrate the Pyramid. Pyramid Outpost. Now, this actually culminates in a boss fight against Zamida, Taken of the Witness. That's right, guys. Meatball is back. Now, you're going to hit him until he goes immune, then clear the blights and ignite the Bellfire to make the boss vulnerable again. Rent and repeat until it's dead to move on to the third part. Now, the third part of the battleground is the Overworld, with a boss fight against Warden Vingus, a Shadow Legion Centurion. This fight is actually pretty linear, with each stage pushing the boss progressively further and further toward the back of the room. Now, once the Warden goes invulnerable, a notification will pop up on your feed saying a dark feeder fills the area. Now you can actually move up to where the warden was previously standing and ignite the bellfire. This will give you a dome in which you're safe, but if you are standing outside, you will begin to take damage over time. So again, just dip back in real quick to get that safe haven buff before venturing out. Very similar to like blind well. Now to drop the warden shield, you'll need to kill the two wizards that appear on the right and left of the boss. Kill them, they'll actually drop a moat. Pick up the moat and bring it to the bellfire where the safe haven is. Now when you approach the center, you'll be given a prompt. Consecrate Taken Essence. Now, once you deposit the Taken Charge, you'll instead be given a glowing charged up orb. Now, if this looks familiar to you, that's because it's straight out of the Corrupted, baby. Toss that charge up orb at the boss to bring down a shield. This will take two orbs to do. And you rinse and repeat here, guys, until the boss goes down. Move on to the next step and release the captives to get your loot. You also free Amanda Holiday in this, and you progress the quest to the next step. Now, the next step requires us to return to the war table in the helm. Interact with it, and you'll be able to claim the new sword caretaker. Now, this will also progress you to the next quest step. But first, before you do that, you'll want to grab the Ingram Tracker from Master Raul that becomes immediately available in the following screen. There's actually a really neat little item that'll go into your inventory and it'll tell you how many Ingrams you have at which vendors. Now, once you've got both, your debriefing with Mar will begin automatically. Now, Mar will let you know that she sensed your triumph through the choke of the Pyramid Suppression. Actually, pretty good dialogue here. And afterwards, you'll need to choose your first Awoken Favor from the War Table Upgrade menu. Now, to pick one, you'll need to claim the upgrade components from the seasonal challenges menu. Once you do and you access the war table, there will be three options to pick from. First one is Exemplar of Justice. Your ability final blows have a chance to create a favor for you and your allies that improves melee ability recharge. The second is Exemplar of Grace. Your final blows with special ammo have a chance to create a favor for you and your allies that improves mobility for a brief period of time. Exemplar of Zeal. Your final blows with heavy ammo weapons have a chance to create a favor for you and your allies that improves grenade ability 
ability recharge. Now, we recommend that you take either Exemplar of Justice, if you're rocking an ability heavy build, or Exemplar of Zeal, since heavy final blows are very easy to come by. Don't stress too much about the first unlock, though, as you'll be able to unlock all of them eventually. For now, go with whichever one you'll be able to make the most use of with your current builds. Now, once you've selected your favorite, your mission will then update. Collect three Awoken Favors in Defiant Battlegrounds and complete one Defiant Battlegrounds playlist. Now, before you go into the Battlegrounds playlist, make sure you got a Defiant key. This key is actually consumed at the end of Defiant Battlegrounds when you open the chest, increasing the chances of earning additional Defiant Ingrams. You can also claim them from the Season Pass. Second, for my pay to win guardians out there, grab that new exotic bow, Virgilis Curve. We're gonna be reviewing this soon. You also have Overload Bow unlocked with a Seasonal Artifact. And yes, in this playlist, you will have Overload and Unstoppable Champions in the playlist. So use whatever you want. By the way, there are so many ways to counter champions with your subclasses. I was literally suspending champions all day yesterday after unlocking Strand. The beautiful thing about Virgilis Curve, though, is that it can actually stun both Overload and Unstoppable Champions. Again, we'll be reviewing this thing once we have the Catalyst fully unlocked. Another huge reason why you want to use this bow is because the Defiant Battlegrounds has a 25% outgoing stasis damage buff. That's the surge for Battlegrounds. So this bow is actually really good for that. Now, you're also going to want to head to the tower and visit Banshee if you haven't. Just to pick up the quest for the exotic catalyst on this bow, you can be progressing this as you go. Now, the last thing you want before going into the seasonal activity is void resistance. And honestly, guys, I would advise double stacking because right now, that is the threat for this activity. 25% increase in incoming void damage. And the majority of the taken will be able to nearly one-shot you if you're not careful. Again, completely up to you. But really, really, guys, these taken hobgoblins, they don't play, man. Now, don't worry about your light level here. The playlist automatically bumps you up to 1760. Now, upon entering the Defiant Battlegrounds playlist, after unlocking a favor, you'll notice the icon for the favor appearing in areas with purple lights. Now, if you ever run things like Dares of Eternity and seen the pools of purple essence with a stat symbol on them, it's very similar to that. You literally just run through them to pick up its benefits, which really helps with whatever builds you may be using. Now, you might also notice that some favors you hadn't unlocked are dropping too. That's because when you create an Awoken favor, it drops for everyone on the fire team. So if someone's spawning a bunch of favors for you, make sure to slap them with that combination at the end of the activity. Now, once the Defiant Battlegrounds mission is complete and you open the chest with the key, you have finished yet another seasonal challenge that rewards you with a helm upgrade. Now, claim it and then proceed ahead to the farm to debrief in person with Marasov. Now, after arrival, you'll find her in the same place as before, but surrounded by her techians. Speak with her and she'll reward you with a Royal Executioner Adaptive Frame Fusion Rifle. Coincidentally, this will also complete week one story and another seasonal challenge with a war table upgrade components. Now with week one of the seasonal story complete and having used a Defiant key to open a chest at the end of the Defiant Battlegrounds playlist, you'll now have access to two additional upgrades for the war table. Now first, I do want to talk about Defiant keys and then we're going to get into the war table upgrades. Now Defiant keys, as mentioned before, are keys that are consumed at the end of a Defiant Battlegrounds. They give you a higher chance of receiving Divine Ingrams, which you want so you can focus them later into deep sight weapons and high stat armor. Now, if you want to get more Defiant Keys, you'll need to do some Vanguard Ops, Crucible, Gamuts, or even Dares of Eternity. You also have them on your Season Pass. Keep in mind, guys, if it's not dropping for you on the regular, this is Destiny, man. RNG is brutal. Now, for the War Table Upgrades, you'll be able to pick up two out of the four available options. With the Week 1 Story Complete, the Defiant Vestments and Queen's Guard Vow sections will both have their first slot available. You'll also be able to spend the upgrades on the Favor Attunement if you like. Now, if you're like me and you want to get the best rolls and craftable weapons, I highly suggest picking Battleground Riches under the Queen's Guard Vow section. With Battleground Riches, spending a Defiant key at the end of Defiance Battleground increases the chance of earning additional Defiant Ingrams. More Ingrams means more chances to earn Deep Sight Patterns. Now, this will leave you with one upgrade available. Now, you can spin it on Defiant Armor Focusing if you like, allowing you to focus Defiant Ingrams into high stat armor. Granted, I think most of us probably already have pretty solid armor rolls, so it's not really a top priority for me. But if you're looking to get good gear before the raid on March the 10th, then this might be a better pick than another favorite attunement. Now, because I'm all about taking the most optimal route for our unlocks, especially when we're trying to prioritize deep sight weapons, here is the order that we're going to be unlocking things at the war table. And this is based on us getting two unlocks per week. In week two, the next upgrade that I advise will be Defiant Weapon Focusing under Defiant Investments. This lets us focus Defiant Ingrams into seasonal weapons that we've unlocked in collections. Then, it will be Queen's Guard Arsenal, which will give us a small chance to earn Defiant Keys when focusing season to find weapons and armor. In week three, I advise picking up Deep Sight Decoding, which will make the first season to find weapon we decode each week have a Deep Sight Resonance. This is definitely a must-have. Really cuts down on RNG, guys. We'll also pick up the Vessian Ward from the 
Queen's Guard Vows, which grants you an additional Defiant Ingram and War Table reputation for spending a Defiant Key at the end of a season of Defiance Battleground, in which you receive favors of grace, justice, and zeal. Now, in week four, we'll grab the Defiance Sojourner from the Defiant Vestments, which will make it so that when we earn a Defiant Ingram by completing non-Battleground activities, we'll also earn an additional Ingram. You see all this coming together, guys? More opportunities here to get all the loot that we can. Lastly, we'll pick up Legendary Deeds from the Queen's Guard Vows, so that when we spend a Defiant Key at the end of Legend Difficulty Defiant Battlegrounds, it increases the amount of gear granted. Now, after that, any War Table upgrades we might get will fill in the Favor Attunements and the Defiant Armor Focusing slots. The more Awoken Favors you're able to earn in-game, after you've gotten the Vestian Upgrade, the better. So guys, that's pretty much it for our Season of Defiance Guide. Now, based on previous seasonal content and how these objectives were metered out, I fully expect Season of Defiance is going to be pretty much the same exact way, with us breaking people out of prison each consecutive week in some Guerrilla Warfare type action against the Shadow Legion. As for the weapons and loot, they definitely look juicy. We'll be reviewing these as soon as possible. We've got some new traits in the batch, and we'll be testing those as soon as we get our hands on them. Well, fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching, and as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right.